every life is precious every life is god given god gives us as a gift our life and we have the responsibility to protect and give it back to him Hello. Welcome. Welcome to Wordnet Productions. And I'm Father Sony Sebastian. Here we are with another episode of our Power of Love. And today we have two guests. Interestingly, two people who are so fired with the power of love and the power of the spirit. They are Mark Hall and Aaron Miller. Mark is the founder of the program called Pregnancy Outreach and Aaron has joined him just recently. Welcome to both of you to Bodden Productions. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father Sony. Thanks for coming. It's a joy to be here. Oh, it's a it's a we are privileged to have both <laughs> of you because uh, you know sitting uh in in our um, makeup room we were talking about and I could see that uh, power so also the fire that is burning in you your eyes kind of glowing with uh, with your dedication to protect life i say protect life because for the last 25 years mark you have been led by the spirit to protect every life and to protect it right from the beginning of conception and i would want to say from the inception not just conception from inception until as i mentioned you know in my teaser until we give it back to god now tell me when did you start this program called pregnancy outreach i know 25 years ago where and how and why Thank you for this opportunity. It's just um, I'm a little speechless here just because I've looked back over 28 years, 28 years. 28 years. Okay, that's right. And back earlier in life, I got my fiance pregnant when I gave her an engagement ring. Both of us had been chased through the relationship for 3 years and I ended up making a mistake and got her pregnant the night I gave her an engagement ring. and she ended up losing the baby and we got married and she got pregnant a second time and we lost that baby and about 4 years into the marriage she ended up walking out on me and some of her story I need to keep private mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but having lost two kids of my own mm-hmm. that I found out in 1995 this abortion <coughs> center that I had been to as a teenager went in and got my girlfriend got the pregnancy test there and um had a really bad experience there and I heard one day that it was there was a law that was passed and it was illegal for Christians to go be on the sidewalk in front of that abortion center mm-hmm. and me I like excitement I come from a background I'm really enthusiastic they called an ambulance chaser You know, you like to see the excitement and everything. So I went back on a Saturday morning, somebody told me that they were arresting Christians for being at the abortion center. Mhm. Uh-huh. So I went out there to check it out. First time I'd been there in 15 years, obviously. And um when I showed up, a judge had made a law where they made an injunction that you couldn't be within 30 feet of the abortion clinic property and if you were in conjunction with this one the operation rescue group I had no idea who they were or anything first time to the clinic i never been to any meetings never even heard of rescue never heard any of that just went there and i watched and i watched a young man by the name of Eric Olson walk across the street violate the civil disobedience and knelt on the sidewalk and when he did the police the melbourne police department came up and they told him you're in violation of this and you realize you know you need to leave or we're going to arrest you 
So they did. And when he walked in front of me, my dream was to be in life, earlier in life, was to be an Air Force pilot. Mm -hmm. I went through ROTC at O'Galley High School and almost failed high school and did fail college. So my dream got shattered. But at that moment, as I stood there with a young gentleman walking in front of me, arrested by the Melbourne police officer on each side, I audibly heard behind me what sounded like the voice of my biological father. And I heard, you wanted to be in the Air Force? I'm calling you to fight the forces of the air now. And I turned around and there was nobody there. Mm. It was as clear as I'm talking to you. And I was like, Lord, do you want, do you want me to go over there and get involved in this? I've never done anything like this before. I got movers coming at noon to move my business. Mm. And I heard, let the dead bury the dead. I was like, Lord, I'm afraid. I've never been arrested, like I said. I don't want to do this. I'm going to do this. And the song, Be Not Afraid, I sing on the worship team at my church. And that song, Be Not Afraid, I, I Go, go Before, before you, you. One of the verses says, Though you stand before the power of hell, and I'm looking and at an abortion at center, side. and death is at your side, my whole body just went to peace. Mm -hmm. And I walked across and got arrested with 52 people that day on civil disobedience. We never spoke a word, and we ended up in court. It went all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States. And after it got upheld, we realized that Operation Rescue was no longer in town. Mm -hmm. And so the injunction said anybody in concert with them. So we were free to go back out all the way to the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. but in God's court, he made a way for us to all go back out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I went to our bishop. Um, I had a <laughs> boat business at the time uh, for four years, buying and selling. I'm a Johnson and Evanrude outboard mechanic by trade. Mm -hmm. I went to our bishop and I just decided I didn't want to do what I was doing anymore in that business. Because one thing God did was he put a tumor, in, allowed a tumor inside my spinal cord. And when they did that surgery, I had a one-year lease option on a piece of property where I was doing my boat business. And when they did the surgery, it put me out of business. So now I had to find something. I lost $40,000 in 1995 with my hope and my dream of being, having my own boat place. Um, I'm going to, you know, I, I, we're coming back. Uh, let me hear initially a little from Aaron as well. What has inspired you to join with this man? Okay, sure. So in high school, when I first got my driver's license, I was sitting in adoration. I liked a girl at the church. I had left Michigan to come to Florida, so that was a time of conversion in my life to go to the adoration chapel uh, much more often. I had holy hours there, mm -hmm. hoping to see the girl there. Um, and I was convicted to the prayer, prayer at the clinic because my parents got my brother, my sister, and I doing all kinds of service to the homeless, to the mentally handicapped when we were kids, and uh, also to pray at the abortion facility. And it just hit me in adoration this one uh, evening, if I could give up high school and stand there f for one life, even if it took giving up high school, and it wasn't in God's plan, but during college I... Um, decided to pursue this ministry of training apostolates, like learning how to logistically and prayerfully um, give young, young people that experience mm. of human compassion and service. And I love and I thrive on collaborating with missionaries and, and creating media training mm -hmm. through videos. And so it was a really natural fit to find somebody doing this service that I find so important, taking my background of doing service, feeding the homeless, visiting retirement homes, to find someone that can actually have success on the sidewalk, capture what he does, um, turn it into video training to duplicate it, because he's not going to be here forever. And 1,147 babies saved is not a typical result for somebody to, in sidewalk counseling, even, even over 28 years. 1, that's quite something. 1,147. 47, and I've seen that in person this last weekend where we had... On Friday, here in Bakersfield, I invited him to come out. I've known Mark for 12 years. Uh, we met on a retreat team, 
and uh, invited him to come here so that we could join forces and train and hopefully he can be here for a good 40 days or 80 days or 120 days, depending on which cities, you know, where... He wants me to move here. I want to, uh, yeah. You know. Mark, Aaron just mentioned 1,147,000 11, children. 1,147. So, yeah. Yeah. In the last 28 years, that, how did you do that? I call the ABCs of spiritual warfare. Every day, holy hour. Every day, Blessed Virgin's Rosary. Every day, Holy Communion and Confession. Because if we're not seated in that, we'll never withstand the time out on that sidewalk. All the rejection that you get, all the cussing out, and all the persecution that's there. The days you go out, you're the only one standing there for six hours or seven hours at a time. But what helped me and the inspirations that I was given that are a little bit unique to the normal sidewalk counseling is a lot of people in the pro-life movement gets blamed for not helping and caring about the women. So my first line to a woman when she comes up to an abortion center, this is what I have in my hand. I always have my rosary wrapped around my hand. I have a $20 bill. A hundred dollar bill, a little baby, mm -hmm. we call him Cletus the fetus, and sometimes I even hold him up like we do with our youth thing and say, Mommy, please, don't take my life. And I try to bring a humor into the softness of such mm -hmm. a tragic moment. So when a mommy comes up, my first statement mm -hmm. to her is, Sweetheart, I lost two children in life. My name's Mark and I'll give you $20 to stop and just talk to me for five minutes and tell me your story. No judgment, no strings attached. I just want to hear your heart to see if there's something we can do. I told you I lost two children. I'll treat you, girl, like the daughter that I never got to raise. I'll meet your needs, but not your greeds. I'll give you this $100 bill no, no, yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Hundred dollar bill to be able to get the ultrasound and see the baby, or that's what we originally said. Now we say to check the viability of the pregnancy. And if any of you are listening to me that are sidewalk counselors and doing ultrasound, trying to get them to do it, once we change to those medical words, instead of saying, show you your baby, because as soon as we say, show you your baby, then they shut down because you've just humanized it. But if we can simply say to them, I want to check the viability of your pregnancy, and we give them $100 for it, I say it's like the Good Samaritan. If you're going to be a sidewalk counselor, your ministry must be based on the Good Samaritan story. We have to put our money where our mouth is. So we offer mommies a $100 bill to come on board and see their baby on board. And when we do, we've only had seven, which is seven too many, out of 1,147 that still went in and had their abortion. So we tell them, if you need help, I'll treat you like my own daughter. I'll meet your needs, but not your greeds. And then once they come on board, um, mm. they're coming out. My other line that's beautiful, you God's given me, and he gave me this clearly in adoration, if you want words and wisdom for what God wants you to do in your ministry, just go speak to him in adoration. Gaze up on Jesus and ask your question and then close your eyes and expect Jesus to give you an answer because he'll inspire you with words that you need. My favorite line that breaks the wall is, sweetheart, are you a Christian? 80% of mommies will profess to be Christian. So then I say, so if you and I are both Christian, and we both call God Father, as in our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What does that make <laughs> us? Mm -hmm. And as soon as I, I make, have them answer that question, as soon as they, she goes brother and sister, I just look at her and I go, you're just a little sister that I never met before. And I speed it up. I go real slow. I go, you're just a little sister that I've never met before. Can I give you a hug, little sis? And boom, now we've offered her money and we're giving her love. 
And I just look at her and I go, girl, I just want to make abortion unthinkable for you. Mm -hmm. God has gifted you with this child and we're here to support you. Why am I giving you a hundred? Because this is the first of hundreds of dollars we'll do to help support whatever you need. I have churches, I have 12 churches in Florida. If I have to support a mommy, I can pay her rent through 12 different churches. Each church will pay one month rent. We put out as much as $10,000 for one mommy. She named her baby Destiny because she recognized that that was God's destiny to get her off of crack cocaine. She got her life straightened out, saved the baby, and is a super mm -hmm. mom right now. And little We're going to 15. take a short break now. I mm. want to hear more about uh, more details about how you are doing, and then also I think you have some, you know, what you want to do with your future plans, and uh, you also have what we call the <coughs> Hummer Limo program. Hummer Zine. Hummer Zine. <laughs> So I want to hear about, about those things also in detail. So we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we want to hear from, about that. So also from Aaron, what he is trying to do here in uh, Bakersfield. Stay with us. This is something that is very important. So also interesting. We all need to save and protect life. So don't go away. Do you want to fall in love with God? I'm sure we all want to. The book of Psalms contains the directions. Thousands of years ago, people like you and me talked to God out of the depths of their hearts, revealing an intimate love. Psalms are the expression of the faith in God by people around 3,000 years ago. God was not a mere abstract creator, but was present involved, and a real person of power and emotions. Now, when we read or listen to the Psalms, we can know the intensity of this love. Entering into the influence of the Psalms, we can find a path to know and love God. To know more about the Psalms, you should get a copy of Father Mike Manning's booklet, The Psalms. It will help you to understand the 150 Psalms better as he has categorized them. He uses the technique of acts, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. Get your copy today and know the categories. Learn to pray with the Psalms. Call the number on the screen or email us. You can also get it through our website. Get your copy today. Welcome back. We're having this beautiful sharing. I don't want to call it a discussion. Sharing with uh, Mark and Aaron who are with the program called Pro Pregnancy Outreach uh, based in Melbourne, Florida. Not Australia. <laughs> Melbourne, Florida. No. Um, Mark has been involved with this as you heard already for 28 years. And uh, they, he has had... Uh, four tours, as he calls it. So I would like Mark to share about those tours, you know, starting with the Power of Mercy tour that you had okay. at the beginning. We started a tour because it's not just about saving babies. Once we save a baby, we need to save mommy's soul. So when I told you about being able to give the mommy $100 for ultrasound, the next thing we do is to try to give them this book by Jason and Kristalina Everett. It's called How to Find Your Soul Mate Without Losing Your Soul. Because we need to get to the root of abortion. The root of abortion is people don't know how to love one another. I always say if we learn, live, and love theology of the body, abortion would end. That's the world's cure, is to live theology of the body. So I realized that we're a small little group, and this is a big problem out here. So the year John Paul died, I come from a marketing background. Mm -hmm. And so to go out and get into more of the churches and be able to spread, we put together the uh, tours in honor of John Paul's life. Our first one was called the Power of Mercy Tour in honor of St. Faustina, mm -hmm. who was the first saint that he canonized. 
And our four days are Friday night, St. Faustina, and we put together a <coughs> choreographed tribute to the Divine Mercy Chaplet, where each decade honors a different pope, starting with Peter, and we go through kind of the lineage of the church, stretching out five different popes, and the fifth one is John Paul. It is a beautiful, uh, reverent tribute to the beauty of our 2,000 years of the Catholic faith, mm -hmm. and John Paul's love for St. Faustina. That's Friday night. Saturday night, we do a Mother of Mercy concert in honor of Our Lady of Guadalupe and Juan Diego, who he canonized. And we usually do a, we get the Knights of Columbus to do a supper before that Saturday mm -hmm. night called the Lamb Supper. And we literally serve lamb mm -hmm. to remind people of the old Passover into the Holy Eucharist as an honor to John Paul's year of the Eucharist. And Sunday we go to the masses and after the masses go in and do coffee and donuts and we do a live altar sound and we're able to show people the beauty of that child in a womb and what a little six week child looks like that has a little heartbeat. Yeah, so we, we show that mm -hmm. and they're able to see a six week baby about this big on mm -hmm. a big screen. Now we just, this last year as a part of this tour, we bought a 22 foot inflatable screen that goes on top of the Hummer limousine. Mm -hmm. And we can show a six week baby now this big on top of the Hummer limousine as we travel as a part of this one. Because this year we're going out on the road 40 days to different cities. We're starting with a four day mission with a hope to come so back this 40 year, days. Right now we, you have the, the new tour called the Hooked on Jesus program, right? Hooked on Jesus. We did the okay. power of mercy. Then we did be, not, be afraid. not afraid. Then we did fishers of men right before COVID. And that got stopped a little bit because of COVID. COVID then we got the yeah. Hummer zine. Yeah. And we named the Hummer zine. Why do we name it a Hummer zine? It's a Hummer limousine. And we had a little 11 year old named Rosie out of Georgia in the Bama's family. Mm -hmm. And we took her and her little brother to mass and they were the first ones to ever ride in it mm -hmm. as participants inside in to Hummer ride scene. in the Hummer. Mm -hmm. And so when we got back at night, I asked her, the little girl as she got out, I said, how'd you like the ride in the Hummer? And that little girl's eyes, Rosie's eyes got this big and she goes, oh, I love that Hummer zine. <laughs> so that's and because so I love that, rhymes, uh, we started a new nonprofit ministry because we never had the 501c3. And my brother Aaron knew how to do the 501c3. We never had that before. So we did yeah. it in the name of a rhyme, the Hummer zine pregnancy team. Mm -hmm. um, Mark and Aaron, either of you can answer me this. You know, you, Mark, in, the, in, the, in your sharing, you mentioned about helping the mommy, mm. you know. I personally feel it is not just helping the mommy, it is helping the dad as well. Mm -hmm. Every abortion that takes place in the world it is not just the woman alone who is responsible mm -hmm. and who needs the care and, the pro and you know, that we do everything. It is also the man as well because the man is the father. Mm -hmm. So don't you think we need to care not only just for the woman, we need to also care for the man? We absolutely do, absolutely. Now we have to say both mommy, and I only said mommy because she's the initial impact. Mm -hmm. Now we pay $100. Once we've got baby saved, we pay mommies and daddies $100 each <coughs> to read this book. And it's called How to Find Your Soulmate yes. Without Losing Your Soul. So our goal is to get them to stop fornicating, get to the daddy. So mommy reads this first. And we ask her to read it, highlight it, underline it, give me a two-page written report, and give me a 10-minute oral report. Then we give her $100. Then we give this book to Daddy and say, Daddy, you got to read it, and you have to become this guy. And it's really awesome because Jason and Kristalina Everett, they signed the book direct, directly to the mommy. Mm -hmm. So they personalize this. So this becomes a keepsake for the mom and dad. And I always tell the mommy, I want to be there at your wedding. I just want you to have the right guy. Mm -hmm. So we've set up a whole post-abortion. We do prevention, direct intervention, and then we do post-abortion healing. Mm -hmm. And part of that is the beauty of being able to be forgiven mm -hmm. and know that your child is not dead. So then we encourage them to name their child. We bring them to the Blessed Sacrament. 
And we do a beautiful prayer service with them for them to dedicate their child. You can't baptize them because the children are dead. So we bring them into the Blessed Sacrament and we just remind them and we teach them our Catholic faith that this is Jesus and the experiences that mommies have when we bring them to Jesus. We take them to, we offer the hundred dollars. They got to read this book too, mm -hmm. post abortive. Now, tell me more about this book. Now you mentioned about giving this book to the mother, to the father, to read. What does this book tell? <laughs> this book shares about all the different types of guys that can be out there. So it's more, lead, more directed to a female to find the right husband. And it talks about different types of guys. And then here's what you should be looking for. You have some new programs and uh, you want people to join you. So this is a kind of an invitation, right? To, Correct. Yeah, We're so looking for people to go on the road with us to mm -hmm. do this tribute. Mm -hmm. People that are administrators, people. We're looking for leaders to go on the road with us, not just followers that are leading to do this. Mm -hmm. We're looking for leaders to come to Florida for four things that we're doing in Florida. And we're trying to form two Theology of the Body mission houses. Six guys, six women. Three of them will help take care of our future coffee shop we're trying to do called Outreach on the Beach for Jesus. And it's going to be able to help people just in our whole Catholic faith to evangelize our Catholic faith and also work with those in drug addiction because that's a whole nother passion. I lost two people on my team to fentanyl overdoses mm -hmm. four years ago. So we're trying to set up a coffee shop. So we want three people to cover that. We have a memorial. Because we've shut down the abortion center, we're making a post-abortion memorial in our area. So we're looking for people to come to Florida. And of the 12 that we do, three will do the coffee shop, three will do the memorial, three do the sidewalk counseling with me, and three will help coordinate our Hooked on Jesus tour traveling mm -hmm. efforts there. So we're looking for 12 mm -hmm. disciples that want to mm -hmm. do the ABCs and recognize that that's what we need to do first and foremost, that's how the battle's won. Because mm -hmm. it's really already been won. All we got to do is participate in our part of it there. So that's what Thank we're doing you. now. Thank, thanks, Mark and Aaron. Thanks for this wonderful, wonderful ministry and the work that you're doing to protect life and to promote life. And so also to bring in that healing to those parents who have maybe by mistake gone through this. Yeah. Continue to do this, and I pray that uh, you find those uh, 12, disciples, 12, 12 disciples. disciples to carry on with your new programs in Florida. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the program. Um, you know, the discussion that sharing that we have had with Mark and uh, Aaron. And in case if you want to be part of that 12 pro you know, disciples, please get in touch with them and let's make sure that every life is respected and is protected right from its beginning until its natural end. Mm -hmm. Be blessed and take care.